word stories and share them with one another. All right? And the other side of the assignment is the rubric. Give each other constructive feedback. Your aim is to make the story better. So it's my Sec 5 class. We have a novel that we're reading. We've read a couple of short stories. And there is also um, a, a short story that they've written. So today they're divided into three groups. And for the novel, you'll see right behind me, they're uh, right now creating questions for a Kite Runner Socratic seminar. This group, uh, there are two groups. They're divided into subgroups. So there's one in that pod and one group here. They're doing literature analysis on the two stories that we read this, this week. So they are um, analyzing two short stories that were quite complicated. We never fully analyze them in class. I want them to extract the knowledge themselves. And eventually what they're doing is writing a reading response that is part of the MELS exit examination for English language arts. What they're going to do eventually is brainstorm ideas on the board, try to find themes, try to find common ideas, and then connect them in a reading response. So that's that. This group is doing two things. Say hi, group. <laughs> so this group, there's some in the corner. What they're doing is, first, they're peer editing a short story that uh, the, the draft is due today. So they're peer, peer editing by sharing a Google Doc. And, um, commenting directly onto the Google Doc. Once that's done, and they've read at least two, they're going to then follow a lesson, a flipped lesson, uh, that starts out with a TED-Ed video, and it's on irony. So the different three types of irony, and that's usually a point of confusion for students. So they're doing an irony lesson, and it's uh, at some points they're going to reconnect and discuss, but mostly it's individual work. So I give them generic questions. I try not to feed them actual questions, but I divide them into what we call there's level one, level two, level three. We never look at level one, one questions. Those are very basic, you know, what color was her dress questions. Level two questions are usually... Um, analysis questions on the actual text. So maybe if the color of her dress meant something, that would be a level two question, a symbol, a metaphor. Level three question is when they take that text and apply it to something else. So it can be to their own lives, it can be to another story, it can be to something that happened currently in the news. So they use that text and look at it. That's why our wonder wall questions fit in usually with level three because those are the bigger life questions that they themselves came up with at the beginning of, of our course together. So there are many great ways to use the pen, but for Socratic Seminar, this allows me to be free and roam around the different stations. So I leave this recording device with this group, and it's really cool because it only works with a special paper, but what happens is that any mark you make will also remember what was said at that moment. So you'll see that students, um, because I don't recognize their voices all the time, they just write their names, and very simply, uh, Maddie's going to check at the beginning of... Uh, their idea. As soon as they start talking, she's going to put a check mark so that when I listen to it, I plug it into my computer and this shows up and all the check marks are grayed out. And when one person speaks, I see the check mark light up as they're speaking. There are many, many other uses to the pen, which I, I have here for oral presentations and debates, but this just lets me leave the room and listen to it later. So the pen is on. Show me the uh, LED display. Okay, so we see that the pen is on but we don't see that it's recording. So you need to hit the little button down there for record. Yeah, with the pen, yeah. No, the record button is right. Yeah. Okay. And you'll hear it turn on, and now you see the display. Now it says recording. Mm -hmm. Now you're recording. Yeah. It does. I think that Hassan will always say, like, oh, it's okay, it's okay, because for him, he's like a brother, even though Amir might not see it. But I think that once you spend enough time with someone, if you have grown up with them, you end up becoming friends with them. Um, even if Amir doesn't necessarily love Hassan as much as Hassan loves him, I think he still enjoys spending time with him. Um, I think it's also partially because Amir likes to feel superior to Hassan because he's so jealous of Hassan's relationship with Baba. It makes him feel good about himself, the fact that Hassan is illiterate, or that Hassan would do anything for him, like when he asked Hassan if he would eat dirt for him, and Hassan said, I would do whatever you ask me to. Uh, half our students use uh, the e-beam uh, to capture their brainstorming on the whiteboard, and so the e-beam is uh, this wonderful little mobile 
fabulous technology that turns any flat surface into uh, an interactive uh, board. So Megan, what are you guys working on here? Um, we're working on um, writing the protagonist, antagonist, and the conflict and the theme for a short story. Okay. Okay. And we're taking notes. You're taking notes, and then what, what's going to happen with the notes that you have on the board? Um, I think each group, we're all going to compare our answers. Okay. And because I know that group of there is doing the same thing, mm -hmm. so we're going to see what everyone in the class thinks, and then come up with an overall conclusion. Okay, so the other group in the pod is also working on the same short story. Yeah, and they're answering the same. And questions. they're answering the same. So you're going to do some compa comparing and contrasting. Yeah. Okay, and you've got something on the board there on your upper uh, left. What is that thing? That's the e-beam, and you've got fancy markers, and you're writing yeah. right on the board. Yeah, and it shows up on the computer. And so really you're going to be taking the notes that you have on this board, and you're going to be exporting it as a PDF file and putting yeah. it on your teacher's wiki yeah. so that everybody can see your notes. Yeah. Okay. And they could, if they wanted to, actually make a recording of this uh, whiteboard. So yeah. they could... Uh, record their voices and their writing as they go and they could play it back as like a little video but in this case we're just going to be working with a static uh, PDF. Yeah. You can actually as well if you wanted to uh, upload it to any of your uh, classroom sites, your website or your wiki or whatever you're using, you could also print it out. Um, so I mean think of uh, how cool this is uh, for teachers and kids who do these great uh, concept maps and brainstorming and this amazing mm -hmm. work and it's on our board and we love it and then the bell rings and what do you have to do? Oh my god, you have to erase this masterpiece. So now we don't have to erase it anymore. We get to hold on to it because we digitize it and then we can share it. So we've liberated our ideas from the board. Yesterday they had to take a picture of the board and this is much more interactive and they, ta they take more care into taking their notes. I can tell the difference immediately between yesterday and today. So if we take a look at what the actual screen looks like. So you can see everything that they have on the whiteboard they have here on their screen. And now they want a new page, right? So this is, think of this as a PowerPoint. That's one slide. Here's another, here are your slide uh, uh, deck. And so now they're going to create a new page over here. Did you like using the e-beam? Yeah. Yes. Why? What did you like about it? It's easier to brainstorm on the board together. Right. And then you can easily the erase and keep going. Right. For sure, better for teamwork. Let me ask you a question. Was there something different in the thinking process when you're standing up versus when you're seated at the table? It seems to be like more interactive, I would say. Like yeah. Just the fact that like right. you're writing and it's recording and you don't have to worry about like taking down all your notes mm -hmm. after it's, it's doing it for you, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's like it's, cool. Yeah, that you don't have to like talk and then write it down and then talk and then write like now. It doesn't like, stop your flow. Believe it or not, this is my favorite part. I like to put in my earphones and listen to the conversation instead of walking into the room at random. I get to hear the progression and see where they started and where they ended up. I could assess a few different things, but uh, what they, what I am assessing for this round is really their depth of understanding and how they connect it uh, outside the text. So their understanding, their analysis, and their synthesis of the text. And on your rubric that you use to correct these uh, conversations, what are some of the criteria? There if you don't mind sharing. There are four criteria, two mm -hmm. per competency. Okay. So we have the reading competency. Uh, there we have the understanding of the literature and its main ideas. We have connection of the literature's main ideas to life, to themselves, to other works of literature. And then under the co top competency, their use of language, um, how succinctly they can put forth an idea, how they can communicate it, um, get it out of their mind onto the table, and collaboration how they can build on the group's ideas, how they can feel um, the question and, and, and deal with the question at hand instead of just anticipate what the teacher might want. Uh, so I sit with my rubrics and I listen to them, and right now I'm only evaluating the reading competency, not, not the talk, but we're going to work our way up.